As 2020 slowly became 2021, I found myself once again planning a summer canoe trip. This time it would be with my wife, Hanukkah, her first ever wilderness canoeing experience. With my beloved Woodland Caribou Park on fire in northwest Ontario, I reached out to Rick Dreger from Churchill River Canoe Outfitters in Mississippi, Saskatchewan for ideas. As usual, he didn't disappoint, suggesting a circle route from the Circo Dock on Otter Lake, traveling down the Churchill River, past Stanley Mission into Drinking Lake. From there, we'd go up the Drinking River to Robertson Lake, and from there back to Mississippi via the Stewart River. It was a good route, just over 200 kilometers and a reasonable for Hun's first canoeing expedition. And then, northern Saskatchewan also lit up, specifically around Mississippi. Wildfires closed the road between La Ronge and the tiny hamlet, and things looked very grim for both the locals and anyone planning trips anywhere in the area for August. Despite all the bad reports coming down, we decided to take a big chance and make the drive, agreeing we'd have to be more flexible than usual for this trip. As we drove out of Kindersley, Saskatchewan, and north of Saskatoon and Prince Albert, the sky was a smoky haze above us. We drove through a very recent burn along the road from only a week or two previous, the smell of smoke still thick in the air. From Air Ronge, we started the gravel road, which leads to Missinippi and much further north, all the way to Stony Rapids, 600 kilometers further up the road. As we drove towards Missinippi, we were shocked to see a dark column of ominous smoke rising into the hot afternoon air just beyond the tiny hamlet. This was the Devil Lake wildfire. After chatting with Rick, we decided we would start our trip as planned and make changes as necessary once underway. With our satellite device, we could text him from anywhere on our route for updates on the fires and to our route. Of immediate concern was a series of fires and hot spots along the Stewart River out of Davis Lake, our exit route. We enjoyed our last night in civilization at Ravensloft Cabin. Ravensloft, our home for the night. Missing Rick's parents used to own this cabin. Very cute cabin. That evening we watched a helicopter and water bomber fight the Devil Lake fire nearby. The only active firefighting activity we witnessed on our entire trip. Our first day started bright and early and by 0545 we were loading the canoe at Kirko's dock on Otter Lake. Birds. Excited and nervous, hoping we don't have too many forest fire issues of our own to deal with. Conditions couldn't have been better on this first day of our trip. We witnessed flirting loons, flying eagles, and jumping fish all in the first few hours. The lake was still a mirror three and a half hours later as we pulled up to the first portage of the trip around Robertson Falls. The portage around Robertson Falls was a highway and very easy to navigate. It was pretty easy going as we paddled in the strong currents towards Twin Falls and Twin Falls Lodge. We knew the next portage went right through the lodge grounds but weren't sure exactly where. As we pulled into the dock under the lodge buildings, Randy Nelson came to greet us. We shook hands and he made the offer of a tour and a fresh coffee. We weren't going to say no to that. Twin Falls Lodge is a beautifully renovated fishing camp that is worth more attention than it gets. They even have a glamping tent option for canoeists which includes meals and a private tent site just off the main resort. We chatted and visited for over an hour, taking advantage of the lodge's Wi-Fi to check the fire and weather forecasts and let our kids know we were still alive. It was a bit strange to be so comfortable on a canoe trip and soon I was getting the itch to get back out onto the water and away from civilization. Hannah's already caught three walleye, including a huge one that I didn't manage to get in. So I think we will be eating walleye for supper on our first night. When I tried jigging near camp along a fast channel of water between our island and another, I was delighted to hook a nice fat walleye on my very first cast. If he gets off, I'm fine. At Rick's suggestion, we set up our first camp on Edwards Island on a very fine site. As we set up camp, thick smoke settled in over us. Nice 
little camp, actually, gorgeous camp. Very smoky afternoon. Not horrible, but um, definitely some fires going on around Mississippi. We seem to be paddling away from them a bit. Nice campfire spot, a little in the trees. There's the mid, another fire. A little too much in the trees for my taste, but we can move the fire pits, no problem. Very, very dry. Look at those leaves. It's the last day of July, not the last day of August. You can hear it crunching between under my feet. So definitely concerned about fires, but I'm gonna get messages from Rick and he's gonna keep me updated. So it's all good for now. Over. Oh, yeah. Excellent. I told you not to die. On the vid. I'll probably catch one now. Oh. Yeah, that was a bit of a fail. Let's try that again. First walleye fry of the trip. Yum, yum, yum. Armageddon. Hey. Look at that sun sparkling in the lake. Pretty major fire to the north of us. Kind of where we have to come out so hopefully it's burned out by the time we get there <laughs> funny not funny i was quite nervous about the fire situation and a story that randy told us from a week previous in the same area didn't help he mentioned a group of canoeists who were awakened in the middle of the night by a wall of flames and escaped up river in the dark this wasn't something i was interested in trying for myself evening on Mountain Lake. There's the fire calming down a bit for the evening. There's our fire, nice and small. Don't want that to get too big, obvious reasons. Beautiful, calm evening. It's actually a lot darker than the video is showing. How was the first day, babe? It was amazing. It actually was amazing. Yeah, it was an amazing day. It doesn't get any better than this. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it that really doesn't. First day. Hun could not have picked better conditions for her first canoe trip. There were no bugs, no wind. We had a great campsite, caught lots of fish, and had a great evening at camp. All day already, I was very nervous about all the visible wildfires, though. Ash was starting to coat our tent as we debated different options. The situation seemed quite dire at this early stage, and I was very nervous about needing a rescue. Something people don't consider is that even if a rescue is covered by insurance, and this is not a guarantee, what about all our gear and my $4,000 canoe that would be left somewhere out in the wilderness? A rescue would not only be irresponsible, but a giant pain in the butt, and I was keen to avoid it, even if it meant pretty much cancelling our trip. We awoke to pretty thick smoke on August 1st, the second day of our trip on Mountain Lake along the Churchill River. My main concern the first week of the trip was the possibility of having to turn back upstream due to wildfires blocking our route up the drinking river. The Churchill is a big enough river that paddling upstream in certain sections is not a guaranteed success. After a fresh night's sleep, we made the decision to continue paddling past Stanley Mission and through the fast water to Drope Lake before deciding on our next steps from there. Once again, we found ourselves paddling on glass away from our site down Mountain Lake. It took a bit to find some rumored pictographs along the way, but once we spotted them, they were obvious. Bit of a faded but nice painting. First one of the trip we found. Perfect location. I always think the water kind of dances off of them. It's pretty cool. Makes them come alive. Cool. Another beautiful morning. Headed to Stanley Mission. From the pictographs, we continued paddling down the lake and past the settlement of Stanley Mission, which was established in 1851, towards Saskatchewan's oldest standing building, the Holy Trinity Anglican Church, built by Cree craftsmen between the years of 1854 and 1860. I didn't take video as the place felt too sacred for that somehow. Reading the headstones on many of the graves along the walk was sad. Many were young when they died, including a three-day-old infant from 1901. More recent burials were also evident, indicating that the cemetery is still used today. We wanted to be respectful, so we didn't wander the grounds too long, and soon were ready to get back on the river. 
Before doing so, however, we set up in the shade nearby and I used cell service from the settlement of Stanley Mission to research some of the latest wildfire updates in our area. It took over an hour thanks to intermittent cell service, but eventually I sussed out recent fire activity and hotspots that could impact our route. The news wasn't great, unfortunately. We'd already noticed two fires starting just south of Stanley Mission on our morning paddle down Mountain Lake, and now we realize that there were also hot spots east of the Stewart River fires that could easily spread out to impact our route up the drinking river. The weather forecast was for hot, dry conditions for at least two more days. I texted Rick and he agreed that things were looking a little dire. I suggested a possible escape exit through either McLennan or Hailstone Lake at the end of our trip, and he agreed this could work rather than trying to get down the Stewart River. Rick confirmed that we could paddle up the fast water just past Stanley Mission, so we decided to camp in Drope Lake and determine next steps from there. There are two sets of Stanley Rapids. The more southerly rapids are Class 3 and don't have a portage around them. The smaller, more northerly set are Class 2 and present the canoeist with three options. You can run them, line them, or portage them. The lining option includes a strange bumper boardwalk that I've never seen before but is common along the Churchill River. Rubber bumpers on a very slick half-submerged boardwalk help folks avoid the portages by pulling or pushing their loaded boats along it. Personally, I think they present more risks than they're worth in the form of a damaged boat or bodily injury, but we witnessed a group use this set, and it does work. I don't know, are these Stanley Rapids, I think? I think so. Just fishing for pickerel, and... Big ass pike. <laughs> That's a big pike and a little jig. After a few attempts, we found a relatively isolated island site on Drope Lake to set up camp. This site was heavily used and somewhat abused with toilet paper lying around, but other than that, it was a great spot. We were too hot and tired to look for another one, so we cleaned up some of the mess and pitched camp. Any sites along the Churchill River are heavily used as this is a high traffic area by both canoeists and motorboats. A couple of days, hopefully. While we wait and see what happens with the fire situation. It's a nice spot. It was scorching hot at our island camp on Drope Lake. We took a bath to cool down, but even that was temporary relief at best. We could see smoke from wildfires rising in thick columns just south of our position and honestly thought our plans to head up the drinking river were kaput at this point. Ash was falling like snow from the hot air and coating our tent and gear. Since there was no guarantee we'd get up the fast water at Frog Narrows just before Nistawayak Lake, we decided to spend at least one extra rest day on Drope Lake to see what the fires would do. Our second evening of the trip was just as sublime as the first, except we didn't dare light a fire due to the dry nature of our island camp. It's hard to explain just how touchy the fire situation felt at this point. Every little spark was a threat. Even my stove lit a bit of grass on fire when I tried boiling some water. As dusk fell over the lake, we were shocked to see small outboard motorboats heading up the Class 3 rapids with almost zero visibility. I guess for the locals, it's a pretty routine run, but there's got to be some risks with doing that in the dark. Oh yes, for a walleye? That's a very nice sized walleye. That one's getting eaten. Day three dawned very smoky with ash falling constantly onto our site and coating everything. After getting some dew overnight the previous two days, day three dawned dry as a dusty old bone without any moisture whatsoever. Hey baby, what's going on? Tell the folks what you're working on. You're making a Christmas tree? Yeah. Oh, doesn't really look like one. A tree skirt. A tree skirt. Yeah. Hmm. That's not usually what happens on canoe trips. Not usually. Oh. Oh. Smoky, fiery day. On Drop Lake. There's the sun. Later in the afternoon, a young couple in a bright yellow clipper canoe set up camp just southeast of ours on a neighboring island. I wandered over to the southeast end of our island and yelled back and forth with them for a few moments, determining that they came from Nistawayak Falls and were paddling back to Stanley Mission where they'd started from. Another smoky day on Droppy Lake. 
headed for a uranium mine. This should be good. Last rest day, hopefully, before we can continue our trip. Hopefully the fires die down a little bit today. It's cloudy, very muggy. High is 28 forecast rain for tonight and tomorrow morning. So fingers crossed on that. And we'll do a rain dance. We paddled down the lake from our site somewhat cautiously since we knew there was an active forest fire to the south and couldn't really see anything in the thick smoke. I spotted an orange ribbon on a fallen tree and headed over to it where a trail leading into the thick bush appeared. For the next hour or so we explored the mine site. With smoke drifting through the forest and tons of mosquitoes, the only bug event of the trip, we felt like explorers stumbling on an old ruin in the middle of nowhere. After getting too many mosquito bites for our liking, we bailed from the mine site and canoed back to Little Stanley Rapids to catch more lunch. The falls delivered once again with dozens of walleye caught in less than an hour. I went on a 10 fish and 10 casts run at one point. When we got back to camp, I texted Rick, we still had spotty cell reception, and he indicated that most of our planned route was still okay to travel, but we'd need some rain in order to pull off a successful exit on the north end. Finally, at 7.30, rain started to fall on Drope Lake, and we finalized plans to head up the drinking river the following day, hoping that the rain would continue overnight. After sitting on Drope Lake for three nights, we were more than ready for a change of pace and scenery. Not that we could see very much in all the smoke. We left camp at around 6.30 and paddled through the Frog Narrows with no issues whatsoever. It is Wednesday, August 4th, and we are in Mc yeah, McMorris Bay. Yes, just went through the terrifying Frog Narrows. Life jackets on, <laughs> baby. Keeping do it on the rapids. <laughs> the class four, yeah. Beautiful sight right here, just out of Frog Narrows. Good news is it rained last night. Bad news is it is still hot this morning. <laughs> but it's muggy. It's muggy, so that should help the fires a bit. They definitely calmed down overnight, so yeah. We are going to cross the next lake, and then we're done with the Churchill River. We'll be on Drinking Lake, so beautiful morning. Mr. Wyack Lake, hopefully that's how you pronounce it. I was going to look at the map before I started pronouncing it, but I caught a fish first, so Mr. something like that. Mr. And I got a nice sized pike. Okay, Bernie releasing a fish. This should be fun. Uh, maybe he can splash on first, maybe. Maybe <laughs> even. No way. Come here, buddy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Walleye of the lake, of the trip. Let's see this, baby. <sighs> On our way to Bolin Lake, we decided to stop in and check out Nistawayak Falls. We paddled past a few tired looking cabins before arriving at the base of Fisher Rapids and Jim's fishing camp at the bottom of the Rapid River that runs down between Iskwatkin Lake and Nistawayak Lake. Nistawayak is a Cree word referring to the convergence of waters. Nistawayak Falls.
Nestawayak Falls are some of the more impressive falls I've seen on a canoe trip with incredible power and atmosphere. I was humbled as I sat there watching the thundering mass of water, and we spent a few minutes soaking it all in, glad to be the only humans around at this early hour. We portaged easily around Potter Rapids, having to do some aggressive paddling in the strong currents downstream of the put-in. Paddling up this section would be very interesting in higher water. From the base of Potter Rapids, we paddled into Drinking Lake before pivoting to the northeast out of the Churchill River against strong winds. To be honest, it felt great to work out after two rest days on Drope Lake and I relished the feeling of a tough paddle. We were getting a little tired from battling against stiff winds as we searched for a campsite on the many small islands dotting Weeham Bay on the northeast end of Drinking Lake. Alas, we could find nothing. We had to move on to Boland Lake. With some reluctance, we dug the paddles in and continued a few more kilometers to Boland. This was a risky move considering there were no sites marked on our map, but the island actually worked perfect. It was a bush camp with no established sites, but it worked about as well as could be expected. Campsite on Boland. It was worth that. Ah, for a bush camp, it's pretty good. Nicely tucked in. On a bed of moss. It's definitely bush though. No one stayed here before as far as I can tell except for there's like one old can lying around, but that's an oil can I think. So yeah. Off the Churchill starting up the drinking river. We enjoyed a small fire near the water, so we couldn't start an accidental one, and the winds died down nicely by the time the sun slowly sank to the west of our camp. The smoke also pretty much vanished for the first time on our trip, and we even wore toques in the chilly evening air. Starting up the drinking river from Bolin Lake. Against the current and the wind, but certainly no uh, Churchill River this one. Which is a good thing. Well, Churchill was nice too, but next phase of the trip, Thursday morning. I can't believe it's Thursday morning already. I know. A little smoky, but not bad. Cold night, probably seven, eight degrees. Slept pretty good though on a bed of moss. Well, I did. Apparently for Hunt, it was a little too soft. <laughs> so nature did not deliver the super mattress she was expecting but i was fine so there's that so yeah august 5th our sixth day of the trip we headed northeast from our camp on bolin lake before portaging around hunter falls into pitching lake we continued north up alexander bay portaging around wick rapids into malchow lake from Malchow, we portaged around Hepburn Falls and Brown Rapids into Rink and proceeded east into Sarosky, where we set up camp for the night. The Thursday morning, start of the drinking river. Still in kind of the Churchill part now, so we still definitely have walleye. Yeah. Nice little guy. <laughs> On with a stickler. We discovered the remains of an old gold mine in the woods just off the main trail. The scenic Hunter Falls were also accessible from this trail. Oh, that is a pike, folks. That is a pike. Look at that thing. <laughs> Biggest one I've ever caught. 
That is a freshwater shark, folks. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Fish. Perfect calm on Matthew Bay on the Drinking River. Quarter after 10 in the morning. We paddled up Alexander Bay, a northern arm of Pitching Lake, before executing two portages in a row up Wick Rapids. On the rungs, baby. <laughs> yeah, no, not on the rungs. After seeing dozens of people in motorboats, cabins, and canoes on the Churchill River, we didn't see a single other human on our journey up the drinking river. This is one of my favorite days of the trip with little smoke, wild views, deep clear lakes and wilderness portages including a wonderful 450 meter walk beside Brown Rapids and Hepburn Falls. The falls were shockingly low and a shallow rock garden after the 50 meter portage into Sarosky Lake was a bit of a surprise, but we enjoyed the variety of landscapes and the perfect paddling conditions. Portage around Hepburn Falls, I think they're called Wick Rapids, very nice portage, wide. Uh, no logs across. It's not marked distance on the map, but I'm sure it's got to be about 500 meters. Very pleasant, actually. Walk in the forest. Right, baby? rock garden on the drinking river. River levels are a little shallow. Or my ass is too fat. Either way, we can't paddle through here, so we're walking. Good thing it's a nice, warm, sunny day. Makes things a lot easier. To Sikorsky Lake, I believe it's called. Something like that. Nice sight on, I think it's Sikorsky Lake. Very nice little sight actually. Beautiful night too again. Some smoke, but not horrible. Hey baby. Going. Good. Tent site tucked into the forest. Pretty thick bush, but pretty sweet little tent site. Nice room for the mid. Yeah. Very nice. We enjoyed another perfect afternoon and evening with no bugs and loons serenading us. Butterflies flittered around as we read our books and fished from shore and took a chilly bath in the clear waters of Sorosky Lake. Smoke rolled in for the afternoon and evening but calmed again later on as we prepared for another big day on Friday to Wapasini Lake. Once again the toques came on in the evening and we used most of our clothing layers to stay warm in the cooler air. Friday, August 6th dawned bright and warm and we took full advantage of the perfect canoeing conditions paddling against some stiff winds up the length of Irving Lake. We navigated up a shallow rock garden into Dirks Lake and paddled in strong winds towards Wapasini. After a tiring 28 kilometer day paddling in blustery conditions, we set up camp on a perfect submarine shaped island in Wapasini Lake. Friday morning, day seven, August 6th. Morning, baby. Morning. Paddling out of Sorosky Lake. Sarosky Lake to Irving Lake. Pretty thick smoke again this morning, expecting possible tea storms and rain tonight, hopefully, and tomorrow, hopefully. Knock these fires down again for us. Probably can't see it on the wide angle, but there's a bald eagle sitting on a dead tree over there, just watching Hun try to paddle straight. I think the whole world is wondering what's going on there, but. I 
loons are calling. It's hard to call this a bad day. Just hope the fires stay calm. Portage out of Irving. Actually in great shape. Another nice forest portage, not too much elevation change. Easy to find, easy to follow. So, so far so good. On the drinking river just past Irving Lake. Calm stretch of water for an expertage. <laughs> uh, yeah, finally. No, it's fine, babe. We're almost there after this one. Well, halfway. Rock garden, just before the end of the fourth portage of the day. Did awesome, hon. That's a lot of work. In the waves on Dirk's Lake. Gotta go left. For some reason we're going to the right. That was Wapasini. There was a loon, trust me. Nice little trail. Goes through forest. A little bit of bogaroonies, but it's dry since it's August. Some thicker stuff that I'm sure is going to elicit some colorful language with a canoe on my head, but other than that, no biggie. So far, I've been quite impressed with the portage system up the drinking river. Yeah, it's been good. Little treasures you find in the bush. Little bog section, pretty much dried up in August. Saturday morning, camp on Wapasini Lake. Thunderstorms coming up. Which is a good thing if they bring rain. Great little site, a little rocky island. It's about 6 a.m. Heard the thunder going off and thought, eh, I'm gonna make a cup of coffee. Since we got to bed early last night again, so. need rain. So hopefully we finally get some. We'll see. Pressure's been dropping for a day already, so I suspect we will. Cozy little camp. A little bit exposed, but it's a pretty cozy little camp. A little pointy island.
morning thunderstorm. Meet the rain. Woo! Put out those fires. <laughs> Saturday evening. I think it's August 7th. Nice night. Nice afternoon, actually, after a morning of tea storms and rain. So we dare have a little fire today. Just a little one. Still surprisingly dry. Hun is still surprisingly working on her Christmas tree project. So there's that. Just need a lot more discussion. But hey. Who else can say that they hand bombed a Christmas tree skirt to the sound of loons? <laughs> True. On which lake is this? Wapasini. Wapasini Lake. I am willing to bet zero people can say that. <laughs> well, I bet there would be some. Zero. <laughs> Maybe zero today. <laughs> I guarantee you zero today. Zero ever. Trust me. Maybe now. Sunday, August 8th, the ninth day of our trip, we paddled out of Wapasini in light rain and proceeded west to Robertson Lake, where we found a perfect spot to set up camp on the northeast end of a large island. Ah, Sunday morning, August 8th, I believe. Perfect, perfect day, exactly what we needed, hopefully to calm the fires down for our second week. Gray, steady, kind of drizzle, rain. Not normally the day I call perfect on a canoe trip, this sort of weather, but on this canoe trip, perfect. And the rocks are very slick. Beautiful Sunday morning, August 8th. On, I don't know, mid to north end of Wapasini. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. A little bit of rain, which is perfect. So quiet. A little bit more? Yeah. You should be able to just, just haul him in. But when he fights, he should pull some line out. He's right here. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he not pulling line, I wonder? Should he be? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the F word on a family video. <laughs> We're gonna get you off, okay? Come yeah, fish have hearing like dogs. <laughs> We're gonna I suck. Something. Here. We're not sure what. It's pulling pretty good. <laughs> and it is a lake trout. <laughs> nice little guy. Here, bring him my way. Way to go, babe. Your first lake trout. And the arguably the first one. Bailing in the bush for a tea storm. They weren't supposed to come till this evening, but we definitely have one approaching. But we were close to a campsite and could bail. 
canoe's tied up. Hopefully it doesn't fill too full of water, but for now we're good. Bailing in the bush. try see if we can make our campsite see if there's more storms are gonna hit that's the one that just left us so now it's gorgeous so we're gonna book it we chased the storm clouds out of the north end of Wapasini taking in more beautiful boreal landscapes along its steep rocky shorelines Robertson Lake how's it going babe Good. Catch me a lake trout for lunch. That's what I'd like to have is some lake trout for lunch. That would be delicious. Be pretty stellar. So we took a C minus site, which definitely had the fire ring going for it and the landing spot and the shelter, but it had no tent, no real tent site. And I believe I made it into an A prime site. So here's our cooking, eating tarp area. And this all back here is Nice little sidewalk feature that I cut in, cut out a bunch of logs here, another sidewalk feature guiding you to the world's softest tent site on a bed of moss. There she be. So yeah, this was all looking like that before and that. Actually, to be honest, it only took about an hour to clear it out and get it nice and easy to walk to. So there you go. I believe we have an A-prime tent site. The air was much clearer than at any other point in the trip so far and much cooler too. We enjoyed a nice warm fire on the point and went to bed very satisfied with another perfect day of tripping in the rear view. On day 10, we paddled on glass out of Robertson Lake, bucking a stiff wind for 19 kilometers and taking the largest portage of the trip at 720 meters. We caught lots of lake trout and made it to our camp on the huge Santa Mursky Island in Collin Lake at around 1330 hours. Beautiful morning. Black Beauty is loaded and ready to go that way. Let's see if we can catch some lakers on the way out of Robertson. Maybe we should keep moving this time. Oh, maybe don't let him get off. Mm. Yeah, who does that all the time? That's asking a bit much. Six hooks on his rod and he can't freaking keep a fish on. Oh well. First fish of the day on Robertson. Let's see what Hanukkah got. It is a pike. Woo! Guess who's taking them off? It was a magical morning paddle until we hit the longest and mankiest portage of the trip out of Robertson towards Solimus Lake. The portage was an unmarked length on the map, but I measured it at around 720 meters. 
It was also slightly south of where it was marked on the map, resulting in some uncertain confusion as I tramped through forest and bog looking for it. As usual, if you're not on the portage, you will know it. Thank goodness someone came through here with a chainsaw at some point, because between the blowdown and the bog, it was bad enough with a fairly decent trail. Portage to Robertson Lake from, uh, I'm actually not sure, it's not Solimus Lake, but the one nearby. It's a bit of a settler or settler, I don't know. <laughs> she's, uh, she's a lot of work. Well, it's 700 meters. And uh, what you're seeing me do here is the easy stuff, so. Um, I mean, thankfully someone has been through here with a chainsaw relatively recently. But uh, it could be interesting with a canoe on my head. There's definitely been some more blowdown recently. And the trail is not completely obvious everywhere. Boggy and goes through some fairly tight uh, deadfall. But like I said, I'll show some more video there. So this is the suck. I hate to see what this is like when wet. <laughs> there is trees underneath the water, but they're not that easy to find. <laughs> and when you step off of them, you are falling out. Well, you go knee deep in mud. That is a fact. <laughs> Case in point. Yeah. Some sections actually aren't too bad. This one's fairly nice before we get to the deadfall section. So there's deadfall, forest, swamp, deadfall, lake. That's how this one goes. And about 700 meters long. Probably slightly longer, actually. Thank goodness for someone with a chainsaw, I'll tell you that, because <laughs> this trail is a no-go without that. That is a fact. What do you figure? How's it going? <laughs> Sully Moss Lake, beautiful. And no smoke, yay. Beautiful day. Nice portage out of Sully Moss Lake. Very well maintained, well traveled, and fairly short, especially compared to the last one. Well, I think that's how close we came to a live fire. Looks to me like that has burned very recently, probably two days ago this was on fire. So, whew, talk about cutting it close. Nice little portage between Solly Moss and Colin Lake. On our way to Colin Lake. Oh yeah, this is a little lake after Solly Moss. Well, actually a big lake, I'll have to figure out what it's called. Forgetting where we are with all these quick little portages. Very fresh burn all around, but obviously not here. Yeah. What were you thinking? Lovely little portage trail between two unnamed lakes on our way to Colin from Sully Moss. I know we went through another lake, but I don't know the name of it. So, anyway, beautiful day. Easy to follow, a little portage, some muddy sections, but nothing like the other one. 420 meters.
campsite on Collin Lake, Sandomersky Island. Burnt in 2015. Oh, a little more than we bargained for over there. Thought we were washing clothes. Oh. It's uh, a serviceable site. It's not uh, nothing A prime, that's for sure. Probably a B. Fire ring. And then a serviceable tent site or two back here. It'll work for one night. Wouldn't stay multiple days here, that's for sure. Some nice little lake access points. I have to fish for lake trout. I already caught one on the trolling on the way in, but apparently they're right off this point. So beautiful deep lakes here. Beautiful day. Thanks to the burn, the campsite on Collin Lake was likely our least favorite of the trip. The tent pad was good, but very exposed to the elements, and the camp kitchen area was a bit manky. It wasn't horrid by any means, and in good weather it would suffice. I even found a good spot for the hammock, but it was pretty exposed to a cool northwest wind that was getting pretty strong already. Reading from my journal, jotted down at 0800 hours on Tuesday, August 10th at our Collin Lake camp. Wow, what a night! Firstly, it's raining and it's only 11 degrees outside. The timing couldn't be better to hopefully put out one final nail in the coffins of all the local wildfires. But the wow isn't for the rain on the tarp over my head, but for what I experienced over my head last night. I woke up around 0130 hours and my first thought was that I had to pee. I was quite annoyed by this inconvenience and I reluctantly grabbed my headlamp and groggily exited the tent. Yowzes! My foggy brain was instantly zapped wide awake. The night sky overhead was absolutely brilliant, with no moon and no smoke or clouds to mar the Milky Way and Aurora Borealis clearly visible dancing over the lake to the north. I whispered loudly to Hun that there was a light show going on and that I was going to take a few photos before coming back to bed. At 0300 hours, I finally crawled back into my sleeping bag with my soul filled. Cullen Lake may be a B-grade campsite, but the views and the experience I got out of it during our night there deserves a solid A+. Some ancient wonder from a distant past comes bubbling into the surface of my consciousness as I look up and marvel at our tiny place in this vast universe. More rain, Tuesday morning. Excellent. This will put any remaining, I would think, hot spots out. Um, yeah, this is actually perfect. Nice hard soaking rain, no thunderstorm. Tuesday morning. <laughs> Wasn't that long ago? And uh, you woke up in a t-shirt and were hot. You know, here I am all bundled up. I got my, you know, full rain suit on. Quite funny actually, the way this land just changes so quickly. Um, you need to come prepared with everything. You can't, uh, can't take anything for granted out here. It could be 35 one day, and now we're sleeping. It's about 8 degrees at night, 8 to 10 degrees. It's 11 right now, raining. Um, but it's perfect. We needed that. Got to put those fires out. Um, and this will do it. I, I think they were out already, but this will definitely do it. And it'll prevent new ones from starting right away. So, um, yeah. Overall, perfect. Everything's just being timed perfectly on this trip so far. The day after a stunning night beneath the stars would be the toughest of our trip. Strong northwest winds relentlessly hammered our exposed site in Cullen Lake, and as the morning progressed we had a decision to make. Either stay hunkered down or brave the wind and waves and try to make it to Minuik Lake. We paddled off our site in two-foot waves and strong winds before turning southwest around the huge Sandomersky Island. From there we paddled and portaged in cold wind and rain across Versailles Lake to another great island site in Minuik. Portage on Tuesday morning, well actually I think it's Tuesday afternoon. Rain has just been coming down in sheets on us, which is good, of course. Going through an old burn. Kind of a neat portage, actually. 
goes way up and then way down. But holy moly, we've been paddling against a very strong west wind all morning. Well, we didn't leave camp till 10, just to see if it would calm down a bit. And it did not. So we said, screw it and left. Two foot waves, rollers, it was fine. But we are getting ready to get to camp. Probably about an hour away yet. So yeah. It's good to have a few days like this and we needed the rain, so. Minuik Lake campsite. Quite used site, but we are delighted to be here after a very challenging paddle. Um, yeah, it's a pretty extensive island, narrow. Lots of fire pits. Tarps kind of protecting us from the northwest wind, west wind. Of course, the sun's out now, but I'll tell you, it was sheets of rain an hour ago. A little protected bay between the islands. Surprisingly, only one good tent site that I could see so far anyway. Nice, nice little site. Be yeah, heavily used. Oh, what are we here? <laughs> oh, oh, they're working hard, hard with working. her broccoli cheddar soup. It's delicious. We need some warming up to do. That's what's going on there. It's a very intense paddle. Three and a half hours. So this is probably our home for two days. Today and tomorrow. Minuik Lake. Seven o'clock. Warming ourselves up in the tent. Windbound on Minuik Lake. Thankfully we were gonna do a rest day anyway. But as you can hear, it is windy. Very windy. 60, 70 k an hour, I think. Just hoping a tree doesn't fall on us, but there's not a ton of trees around here, so. I think if one does fall, it'll hit another tree, hopefully. some wood gathering on the island to kill time. There's gonna be enough wood here to have a fire for days. <laughs> but hey, one has to stay entertained. Another blustery day on Wednesday, hunkering down for a rest day. It is windy. Woo. Full day, windbound, on an island in Minuik Lake. I don't think I've ever had that before. Three days now of very strong northwest winds. This is probably the calmest it's been in three days. Since we left uh, Collin Lake. Yeah, it's, it's the calmest it's been. Finally. We actually took camp down. We're gonna wait for calming. That was promised, but never came. And now it's uh, about 6.30 at night, so we are gonna spend a third night on this island. And we will spend our last day paddling, hopefully in better weather than what we've had the last three days, so. Um, yeah, very interesting. Not something I've experienced before. That 
long and that strong of wind from the exact same direction. So there's got to be a couple of high pressure systems just keeping this low locked in or something. I don't know. Um, I mean, the good part is we're dry, uh, we're safe, uh, and we honestly have the luxury of time um, because we don't have that part of the road. <laughs> so that's good. That's a good. We pushed on on Tuesday. This is what my boredom produced, all hands on. Um, of course, we've burnt a ton of it. I've been burning all wood all day. So, I mean, maybe you can't double that, but you can definitely, I've uh, burnt about a quarter of it. Our wind barrier, finally just got sick of the wind. Built a nice little wind barrier with our tarp since it wasn't raining. And yeah, this is the rest of the island. It's been quite picked clean for dead wood on this side, but I got my wood from way down that end. Finally, three days, relentless wind, Thursday night, silence settled over the camp. <laughs> seem endless when it's happening. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hopefully this carries on to tomorrow when we get a nice little last day of paddling. Last full day and it's a beauty. Beauty, beauty. 6.30 in the morning. And it is calm and still. And we want to get the heck off this prison island of Alcatraz. Uh, it's not that bad. But it has been our prison for the last two and a half days. So it's going to feel good to canoe out of here, I think. Heading for other adventures. Friday, August 13th, we were off by 0730 for the relatively short 13 kilometer paddle to a camp on Davis Lake. We took our time fishing and enjoying our last full day in the wilderness. Friday morning, last full day of the trip, and it's a beauty. For the last three days, this is very nice. I think those are the best two casts I've seen from you the whole trip. <laughs> yeah, she always casts like that. Always. Sneaky little root out of Minuik. Oh, tiny little one. That's hilarious. Lift him out of the water. Yeah, that's that's what Hun catches, okay? That's a Hun size fish. Baby. I'm sorry, baby.
Oh, we must be getting close to civilization. The uh, portage trails are highways. <laughs> the portage between Minowick and Davis, very well traveled and camped along. Still a beautiful morning. We're the only ones out here so far, so that's a win. Yeah. Drifting down Davis. It's a tough life, but someone's got to do it. Not a bad way to spend your Friday morning. That is a fact. Canoeing's hard work, though, honestly. We enjoyed a wonderful evening at our last camp of the trip with a nice sunset over the burned area just east of our island from a fire in 2015. We were in no great hurry as we packed up camp for the last time and slowly paddled for the nearby portage into McLennan Lake and from there a short paddle to a dock along Highway 102 near Bears Camp and our pickup location from Kirko. Grumpy this morning, maybe. Just a little on edge. Do you want to see Grumpy? Thank you, Grumpy. Ready to read her 3,000 emails. <laughs> Ugh, not ready for that. Not ready for that. Davis Lake. See you later. The highway between McLennan and Davis Lake. Davis and McLennan. You always know when you're getting closer to the road. But it's a nice morning. Last portage of the trip. Morning, baby. Morning. Last morning. Last morning. How was it, babe? It was awesome, I can honestly say. Yeah, that's probably my what I'm the most happy about is hearing that it was relaxing for you because that's yeah. Yeah. good. It's great. Cool. Lake of the trip. Beautiful Saturday morning. Some cloud, some sun. No wind. Eh, there's wind. Just not right here. We're gonna blow with it. For once it's going in our direction. Well I shouldn't say for once. We've had pretty nice, pretty good wind conditions, but we've also been windbound on this trip. So first week was fires, second week was wind. No bugs though. So that was a huge bonus. We'll see if we can catch some pike around some islands yet before we get to the road.
waiting for our pickup at McLennan Lake. It's supposed to be here in about 20 minutes and you ask why it's so nice and sunny and blue sky. What are you worried about? Well, there is that. <laughs> Coming at us. So we're either going to get really lucky or a little bit wet. These are always bittersweet moments, both to experience and to talk about afterwards. It's easy to talk about paddling in strong winds, viewing historic sites, witnessing powerful waterfalls, and experiencing the numinous under a canopy of stars and meteors. It's much harder to think about all these wonderful experiences coming to an end. The conclusion of this trip is that it's a minor miracle that we did it at all, considering the wildfire situation at the start. To go into the wild with the love of my life for 15 days and to have her come out of it with nothing but good things to say is about as good as these things get. As we drove back to Mississippi with Dan, he filled us in on many other trips along the vast expanse of Saskatchewan's northern landscape up to hundreds of kilometers of Highway 102 between La Range and Stony Rapids. One thing I know for sure, we'll be back.